Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Peter Clausey from Green Swan Capital Corps. How are you today, Peter? Very excited today, Tracy. Thanks for having us. Peter, of course you're excited because you're part of one of the most exciting sectors, the biggest bull market I think that we currently have, which is cobalt. So why don't we start with why cobalt? Why did Green Swan Capital redirect to cobalt? We've been convinced there's a global shortage coming for a considerable period of time. The work of John Peterson and Robin Bromby has contributed to this. We think that with the consumption of cobalt into electric batteries and the rest of the industry, coupling that with the shortage of cobalt production, we will see a cobalt cliff within the next year or two. As a result, our board made a decision to go find cobalt. It has been incredibly difficult, but thanks to our board, we've been able to find a property in the mining friendly jurisdiction of Sudbury, Ontario. So we've done a lot of work with regards to this cobalt cliff that you were just discussing, but it's my understanding there's not very many places in the world where you can find cobalt. Is this correct? That is correct. Cobalt is mainly derived as a trace element from the production of copper and nickel. It's almost impossible to ramp up cobalt production. It's a byproduct, not a primary metal in the majority of cases. And of course, you know, we've been talking about this lithium bull run and we've got lithium properties and exploration plays popping up everywhere. But with cobalt, it's my understanding that this can't happen. There's just not a lot of places where this supply actually exists in the right concentrate. Can you explain to our audience what you mean by that? Sure. Uh, as exciting as lithium is, the periodic table is unforgiving. If you wish to have a rapid charge discharge lithium ion battery, you absolutely positively need cobalt at the cathode with the lithium. So if you're excited about lithium, you must be excited about cobalt. And of course, our audience that may not be familiar with the cobalt market, a lot of the cobalt we currently use is from conflict areas. Is that correct? Roughly 53% of the world's production comes from conflict Africa, mainly the DRC. Amnesty International and Wired Magazine have both recently put out articles about the stresses on humanity from production in that area. They're talking about imposing an ethical supply chain on the management of cobalt coming out of the DRC. And that will likely decrease the global supply by somewhere between 5 and 10 percent. So respectfully, Peter, I know you're exceptionally well connected and, and you've done a lot of work in the resource sector, but how did Green Swan manage to find such a, an interesting and significant cobalt uh, source? It's a funny story worthy of a movie. I've been talking to people about cobalt for close to a year and asking to find primary cobalt metal deposits in Canada. A friend called me one day that he was all excited he had found one in his basement and he had the assay results. The problem was the page had been ripped in half, and while the assay results were great, he didn't know what property it went with. So I sent him back to his basement to look through his 3,000 reports until he finally found it. We were able to find it, we tracked down the company that currently owned it, negotiated a transaction, as of yesterday, closed on the acquisition. Well, what, can, what did Green Swan have that allowed you to go after such a highly sought after property? We had skilled people on the board who understood cobalt and as skilled advisors to help us. We had supportive investors and only 32 million shares out, never consolidated the stock. Our shareholder base is happy with us, which gives us the ability to take some minor risks. They're willing to take a risk on cobalt with us and you've seen how the stock has responded. Well, out of respect for full disclosure, I myself believe in Peter Clossy, I've bought shares. And can you tell our audience that's new to Green Swan a little bit more about the overview of the property and what's happening with it now? Sure. The property is patented lands in Sudbury, which is a, makes it a lot easier to work the property. It's right beside the Glencore smelter and it is fairly easy accessible. 16 claims, patented lands. We looked through the historic reports and what got us really excited was the two historic 43101 reports prepared by third parties. In that, they refer to cobalt grading 3.2% and for good measure, gold coming in at 14 grams per ton. There also was nickel, copper, silver, and platinum group elements. That's what got us very excited. So what should we as shareholders, I'm a shareholder, anticipate say in the next couple of quarters? Well, in the next week or two, we should see assay results. 
While we did our technical due diligence, we had our field team walk the property and pick up samples. And this was one of the samples. We're very excited about that because it appears that most cobaltite in quartz appears in veins between one millimeter and one micron, invisible to the naked eye. This particular sample is about four centimeters across. We hope there's a lot more like that on the property. Well, congratulations, Peter. Thank you for sharing such an interesting story on how this actually gets done behind the scenes, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Tracy. Looking forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks.